In this video, I'm going to introduce the three-month SOFR futures contract. So first off, what is SOFR? So SOFR is, is the secured overnight funding rate. It's an average rate on overnight repurchase agreements, repos, collateralized by U.S. Treasuries. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York compiles it on a daily basis, and it reflects between one and a half to two trillion dollars of daily repo transactions. If you're interested, there's a link here, <clears throat> which will take you to historical data and that sort of thing. Now, the futures contract is not on SOFR itself. SOFR is an overnight rate. The futures contract is on a three month rate. And so that's a three month compounded rate. So compounded SOFR is a three month rate and it's compounded on business days. The Federal Reserve helps us out again by publishing an index which reflects the value of compounded SOFR since April 2018. So to back out a rate from the index that's published by the Fed, we take the index at the end divided by the index at the start. So that's kind of how much is a dollar grown from the start to the end minus one times 360 over days. So that's kind of an annualized actual over 360 rate backed out from the index. If you look at this formula for a second, you will notice it's very similar to how, if you knew discount factors, for example, how you would back out an actual over 360 rate from those discount factors. Uh, these two indices would be in the opposite order and it would be discount factor start over discount factor end, <clears throat> but roughly the same formula. Okay, so let's look at the contract spec of this three month SOFR futures. It is financially settled or cash settled. The underlying is the business day compounded SOFR per annum during the contract reference quarter. We'll talk about what that is in a second. The quote is 100 minus the rate. The tick size is 0 0.0025 index points, and that's worth $6.25. A one basis point move in the rate corresponds to a 0.01 change in price. So that's four of these ticks or $25. Settlement trading terminates on the business day prior to the third Wednesday of the delivery month. And the reference quarter is the interval from the third Wednesday of the third month preceding delivery to the business day before the third Wednesday of the delivery month. Okay, so that's a mouthful. Let's look at a particular contract to make all of this clear. So the March 2024 SOFR futures contract has a compounding period that runs from the 20th of March 2024 to the 18th of June 2024. So that's 90 days. The compounding period is almost always 90 days, but it could be a little longer, a little shorter, a week longer or a week shorter, depending on the exact dates of the contracts. So the last trading date for this contract is the 18th of June, 2024. That's the Tuesday before the um, went third Wednesday of June. And during the compounding period, the rate upon which the contract settles is becoming known. So this contract's trading on a March 20th, or let's say before March 20th, so on February 10th, 2024, we don't know the rate. We don't know anything about the rate. We have an estimate and the market is giving us an estimate of what that 90 day compounded SOFA rate is going to be. On the 20th of March, that rate starts to compound, right? It starts to be known. Halfway through the period, let's say sometime at the beginning of May, Halfway through the period, the first part of the rate, we know the SOFR rate and we know that SOFR index from the 20th of March to say the 1st of May. And so that part of the rate is fixed, but the 1st of the May to the 18th of June, that's not yet. So this rate will continue to change, but as we get closer and closer to the 18th of June, this rate is gonna be more and more known and it's not gonna change very much. Okay, so the futures quote is 100 minus the rate. A quote of 94.8911 implies a rate of 5.1089%. A rate of five and a quarter implies a price of 94.75. A one basis point change in rate, 0.01%, gives a 0.01 change in price. Okay, so now we can also look at the PL for market moves. Person who's long the futures contract makes money when rates fall and loses money when rates increase. The PL is $25 per basis point, 
or equivalent to a contract size of 2,500. Okay, so let's sell five contracts in the March 2024 three month SOFR futures at a price of 98.34.27. And the price moves from to 98.24.36. How much money do we make or lose in our margin account? Well, <clears throat> the market went down by 0 0.0991 in actual price terms. That is equivalent to 9.91 basis points. And the PL, again, the mark price went down, we're short, so we're gonna make money, is 9.91 times 25 times five, short five contracts, $1,238.75. Alternatively, we take 9834.27 minus 98.2436, take the difference, multiply by 2,500, multiply by five, we get exactly the same answer. Now note, the price went down, rates went up. Okay, so we can use these contracts for a couple of things. One would be, say, speculations, right? The SOFR futures price can be used to speculate on short-term interest rates in the future. For example, the March 2024 SOFR futures contract references a three-month rate, starts compounding 20th of March 2024, and ends compounding 18th of June 2024. A price of 97.2462 can be interpreted as a market implied rate of 2.7538. If I believe that the market implied rate is too low, then I want to go short the contract. A higher rate implies a lower price, and I need to maintain the position until the market agrees with me. It doesn't have to be that the rate has been dis determined, I just need the market to agree with me. If the market agrees with me, the price of the contract will change. If I believe the market implied rate is too high, then I want to go long the contract, right? A lower rate implies a higher price. So I can use this contract to speculate on interest rates. Another thing we can do with the three month SOFR futures contract is to lock in rates for lending and borrowing. Okay, so let's set up a scenario here. Let's say we're gonna, we've got a deposit. We, today is November 20th, 2023. And let's say we know that on June 19th, 2024, we're going to have a million dollars to invest for 90 days. The June SOFR futures contract is trading at 94.89, which is equivalent to a compounded SOFR rate of 5.11. And that 5.11 rate corresponds to compounded SOFR from June 19th, 2024 for 90 days. So assuming we could trade at FAIR, a bit of an assumption, but let's work with that. Assume we could trade at FAIR, we could enter into a forward rate agreement and lock in this interest rate and we'll earn a million dollars times 5.11% times 90 over 360 or $12,775 in interest. So let's look at an alternative. So we can use SOFR futures. The three month SOFR futures contract provides an alternative to entering the FRA. The June SOFR futures contract price, as we said, is at 94.89, which is equivalent to a SOFR rate of 5.11. We're going to go long one contract. We're not gonna enter the FRA, we'll go long one contract, and we're gonna make money in our margin account if rates fall, and we're gonna lose it if rates increase. Okay, so let's do a scenario. Imagine on June 19th, when the futures contract is about to start its compounding period, that the price of the contract is 94.39. This is equivalent to a SOFR rate of 5.61%, right? So it's changed from where it started, right? The rate went up. Now we can go into the market and deposit our million dollars at 5.61 and earn interest of a million dollars times 5.61 times 90 over 360 or $14,025. But the futures contract moved against us. 94.89 to 94.39, we were long. One contract, 50 basis points. At $25 per basis point, we have a loss of $1,250 in our margin account. If we think of that $1,250 as a reduction in the interest we're gonna receive, then our net interest is 14,025, 
<clears throat> minus 1250 or 12775, which is exactly the same as the interest we would have received had we locked in the 5.11% at the beginning. Let's do another scenario. In, imagine instead that on June 19th, when the futures contract starts compounding, that the price is 9539. That means the fair compounded SOFA rate's 4.61. We go into the market, we deposit our million dollars at 4.61, and we're going to earn only $11,525 in interest, right? Because rates went down. But we're going to close out our futures. We've made money in our margin account, in this case, $1,250. Consider that as an increase in interest, and our net interest is $12,775, the same as before. So what have we done? We have almost it's not quite right because those those payments happen at different times right the interest we earn on the deposit happens at the end of the deposit 90 days after june 19th the 1250 the interest the money we earn in our margin account we get immediately and certainly get it someday between now november 20th and june 19th so it's not quite the same but it's pretty close we are able to use this futures contract to lock in an interest rate now, of course, the question then becomes, why would we do that? Well, if everything was done at the fair rate, then roughly, except for this timing thing, we would be indifferent to using FRAs and 3 one so for futures contracts. But not everything's done at the fair rate. And even if things were roughly done at the fair rate, there are bid-ask spreads to all of this. So generally, so for futures contracts have smaller bid-ask spreads than forward rate agreements and immediate borrowing and lending have smaller bid-ask spreads than forward rate agreements. So often, or almost always, it's cheaper, better rates, if we think of it that way, we get better rates if we use SOFA futures and immediate borrowing lending than entering an FRA. Of course, there's a flip side to that, right? One hand, it's not the same. The payments happen at different times. Second, we're entering into futures trades. We have to manage our margin. And third, we have to enter into futures contracts. We have to manage our margin. Even if we can do all those things, it's much more hassle to do futures, managing our margin, enter the trade in the future, as opposed to simply just entering into an FRA upfront, which of course is a choice we make about how much hassle are we willing to take in exchange for better prices. And that obviously is a choice.